Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Clear Your Head, all about helping you get control of anxiety. Now, a few weeks ago, I put up a video talking about just a few of the things that anxiety is not in an attempt to dispel some of the unhelpful myths and correct some of the more common misconceptions that get thrown at us when we search the internet for advice to help with our anxiety. Since then, it's come to my attention that there were in fact many more ideas I could have addressed and a great deal more misleading advice than I could have possibly covered in that single video. So, working on the concept that every good film deserves a sequel and if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing thoroughly, here's part two. Because for all the things that anxiety is, here are some more things that anxiety definitely is not. I'm Tim Box and this is Clear Your Head. Now, the reason I'm talking about this stuff is because so often the main reason we get stuck with our high anxiety response is largely down to the misplaced preconceptions we arrive with. There's so much information and let's face it, misinformation available these days surrounding our emotional responses and our mental health that often the first step towards recovery is to get rid of what we thought we actually knew about it. So let's start getting rid of some of the unhelpful stuff now. Okay. Things that anxiety is not. Number one, anxiety is not an illness. Now I know this is a bit of a divisive place to start and I'm sure some people watching this are already upset about that last statement. But the simple truth is that anxiety is by definition an emotion. Now, of course, we treat it like an illness because after all, when we feel excessive anxiety, there are unpleasant physical symptoms that come with that. We go to the doctor, we get put on medication, but it's important to remember that the physical symptoms are in fact the stress response. Feeling anxious might trigger the stress response, but by focusing on that, we end up effectively treating the symptom rather than the actual problem. Every time you've felt anxious, it has been for a reason, whether you were consciously aware of that reason or not. And the reason wasn't because you have anxiety. It was because something about this or an upcoming situation and your perceived ability to cope with it made you feel under threat. I get that there are many people out there that would attempt to invalidate our anxiety struggle and tell us that it's all in our head, we're bringing it on ourselves, or we just need to toughen up, or some other opinion displaying an equal level of ignorance. But the problem isn't their perception of anxiety, but our reaction to that. Often whilst trying to legitimize and validate the way we're feeling, we just end up locking ourselves into that response and talking ourselves out of any potential recovery by framing anxiety as an illness that we can do nothing about. When I'm working with clients to help them change their anxiety response, often the first thing we have to do is recognize that anxiety is not an illness that we're a victim of, but an emotion that we can learn to control. Check out my TED talk for more about this one. Okay, number two, anxiety is not terminal. When we get diagnosed with an anxiety disorder, the unspoken yet very real implication is that we will now be carrying this weight or bearing this burden for the rest of our life. We have anxiety and we now have the job of managing that affliction for the rest of our days. The simple truth is that the word disorder has no inherent time frame in its meaning. It simply describes the way your mind is responding right now. Somebody once pointed out to me that your brain has roughly 40 quadrillion active synaptic connections and they are perpetually rewiring and reconnecting based on what we learn from moment to moment. This means that we're constantly shifting our understanding and as a result our responses. Disorder simply means a state of confusion. How long our thinking remains disordered very much depends on how long it takes us to clear up that confusion. So the good news is that as much as receiving a diagnosis of an anxiety disorder might be daunting, there is no diagnosis that locks you into this way of responding terminally. Like all states of being and all emotional responses, anxiety is transient. It comes and it goes. Okay, before I cover the final anxiety misconception of the episode, I just wanna mention that if any of these thoughts are resonating with you, then why not get a copy of my book, as it expands upon a lot of the ideas I cover in my videos and gives you a comprehensive look at how we get control of our anxiety response. I'll put a link down in the description. Okay, finally for this episode, the third thing that anxiety is not, anxiety is not your identity. I'll often see clients whose main problem is that they can't really imagine what they would be like if they didn't suffer with high anxiety. The phrase, I'm not sure who I would be if I wasn't anxious, is a fairly common one. 
That's because our anxiety response very often has us creating certain strategies to manage that response and avoid the things that might trigger the more extreme stuff. It's an easy mistake to make to feel that our actions define who we are as a person. And if a large proportion of our actions are in response to the potential threat of an anxiety episode, then it isn't a huge leap to conclude that anxiety is now actually defining who we are. But as I said, that's a mistake. If you really wanna know who you will be without anxiety, then there's two things worth saying. Firstly, you will never be completely free of anxiety, at least as long as you're alive. Anxiety is an important emotion, and it's only really dead people who feel none of it. As long as there are things in your life that you care about, you will feel anxiety in some form from day to day. So don't worry about being without anxiety as it isn't gonna happen. However, if you're wondering who you would be without the high level stuff that you feel currently defines you, the answer is you'll still be you, but just an upgraded version of you. And you've been making upgrades your whole life. It's called learning. You don't have the same beliefs and responses you had when you were a baby or a child. And no matter how hard you might try to remain the same forever, you will have different beliefs and responses in five years from now. All we're suggesting by working to reduce and control anxiety is that you will get to decide who you are in the future rather than just letting outside factors take those choices from you. In short, anxiety is not who you are. It's just something you're currently feeling to a higher level than you would like. Guys, I really hope you got something from this video. Thanks for watching. And if you've enjoyed this one, then why not check out some of the other episodes on the channel? I post anxiety advice every Thursday and general mind coaching tips every Monday. So why not hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the content coming your way. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this episode. And if there's anything you'd like me to specifically cover in one of my videos, then put that in there as well. I'm currently working on a couple of requested videos, so I do pay attention and will always try and answer your questions whenever possible. But that's it for now. I'm Tim Box. Keep your head clear. I'll see you next time.